every World Cup has a team that is humiliated and ends up in last place. So in this video, let's see the worst team of each of the last 10 World Cups. From 86 all the way to 2022. There are national teams that lost 8-0 Germany, 7-0 Portugal, 6-1 England and many more. So let's start with 1986. And in that year, hosted in Mexico, there was a team from North America playing for the first time. Canada. Canada made it there by winning a CONCACAF tournament in the previous year and went to its first World Cup. There was a hope for a good performance, but in the group stage there was also Hungary, France and the Soviet Union. Look at this group. So in the first match they lost to France 1-0, in the second against Hungary it was 2-0 and the last match was against the Soviet Union, so they lost again. In 3 games Canada was defeated 3 times, didn't score any goals and conceded 5. The worst campaign of 1986. After that only returned to the World Cup many years later. We'll get there. Now moving on to the next cup, we arrive in 1990, hosted in Italy. And if Canada didn't do well in 1986, now in 1990 it was the United States that lost all 3 games. But they were not the worst. In that year there was the team making its only World Cup appearance in history. The United Arab Emirates. This team is from the country where Dubai and Abu Dhabi are and were coached by legendary managers. They secured a spot coached by Zagallo and later by Pereira, the manager that would win the following cup. So the draw took place and the UAE was placed in a group with Germany, Yugoslavia and Colombia. It was gonna be very difficult, but could make a surprise. However, their hope faded quickly, cause in the first game lost to Colombia 2-0. That was the game to earn some points, but it was over. Then in the next match against Germany, stood no chance, suffered a 5-1 defeat. So now they were virtually eliminated and in the next match against Yugoslavia, it was another big defeat, 4-1. The UAE left the cup with only 2 goals scored and 11 conceded, a goal difference of negative 9. That was very bad, but in this video we will see much worse national teams. So now let's move to the next cup, the 1994 edition held in the United States. This time the US was much better, reaching around a 16. And in that year there was also a country playing for the first time, Greece. Greece had never played before, but qualified with the experienced coach Alketas. It wasn't a team with famous players, everyone played in Greece itself. Then a group stage draw happened and they were placed in a group with Bulgaria, Nigeria and Maradona's Argentina. Argentina was the most difficult, but against the other two could try to earn some points. And right in the first game already faced Argentina, the current runners up, so didn't stand a chance and were humiliated 4-0. Oh and that was also in this game that Maradona scored his last World Cup goal. So after that they could try to make up for it in the next game against Bulgaria, but suffered another 4-0. Yes, 2 consecutive thrashings. And in the end against Nigeria, another defeat. 2-0. In 3 matches, Greece didn't score a single goal and conceded 10, leaving as the worst team of 1994. And after that, the next World Cup in 1998 was held in France, with the United States playing again. But if they managed to make a good run before, in 1998 it wasn't like that. That year they were managed by Steve Sampson and had players like the number 10 Seb Ramos, keeper Casey Keller from Leicester, forward Brian McBride and so on. Then in the group stage they were drawn with Iran, Yugoslavia and Germany, hoping to at least repeat the previous campaign. But right in the first match they faced Germany and started with the left foot, 2-0. If they lost the next game, we're out, and the opponent was Iran. There was a moment when a tension between the two countries outside of football was high, so in an act of peace there were exchanges of roses. But in the match it was Iran who came out on top, winning 2-1. The United States was eliminated. Then in the last match against Yugoslavia, were defeated for the third time. In 3 games lost all of them and ended up with a goal difference of negative 4. Not as bad as that Greece, but finished with literally the worst campaign of 1998. But look, after this bad performance, in the next World Cup in 2002, the United States reached the quarterfinals. They really bounced back. And in that year, hosted in South Korea and Japan, the worst was a team that suffered one of the biggest defeats in World Cup history. That country was placed in a group with Ireland, Cameroon and Germany. Saudi Arabia. The Saudis had already qualified before, were gaining experience and had everything to at least try to earn some points. But it started in a very difficult way. Cause right the first opponent was none other than Germany and this game went down in history. Germany won a nil, the biggest World Cup defeat in the last 20 years. Six different players scored and close scored a hat-trick. 
What a humiliation. Then in the next game against Cameroon, they did much better. But it's all scored and were defeated again. Now there was only one game left, against Ireland. It was a match to try to redeem themselves, but suffered the last blow. 3-0. In 3 games, Saudi Arabia didn't score any goals and conceded 12. What a terrible campaign. But the Saudis didn't give up and in 2006 played again, doing much better this time, even managing to draw a match. So the trophy for the worst team in the World Cup went to another country, and a country that even changed their name since then, Serbia and Montenegro. In the past there was a country called Yugoslavia, but that dissolved and only Serbia and Montenegro kept together, forming their own national team. So in 2006 they were drawing a group with Drogba's Ivory Coast, the Netherlands with Van Persie and Argentina. They had none other than young Lionel Messi. It was gonna be very difficult, but in the first game against the Netherlands, Serbia and Montenegro didn't make it easy. It was a close game, but were defeated with a single goal from Robin. It wasn't a humiliating defeat. So in the next game against Argentina, they hoped to put up a fight, but it didn't go well. The Serbs conceded 3 goals in the first half and another 3 in the second, including Messi's first World Cup goal, 6-0. Now after this humiliation, their last game was against Ivory Coast and started very well, scoring 2-0, but then suffered a comeback. The Serbia and Montenegro national team left the cup with 3 defeats, 2 goals scored and 10 conceded. The worst of 2006. Now let's move to the next one, the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. And in that year, there was a very unique team playing, North Korea. Yes, North Korea managed to qualify, but in a draw were unlucky, because they were placed in a very tough group with Brazil, Ronaldo's Portugal and Ivory Coast, once again with Drogba. And the first game was against Brazil, but if everyone expected a humiliation, it wasn't. Brazil only scored the opener in the second half with a shot from Maicon that went in I don't know how. Until after Brazil made the second, the unexpected happened. Ju Yu Nam scored. Yes, 2-1. They made it difficult for Brazil. So now the next opponent was Portugal and could score there too. But it didn't go like that. Portugal scored 1 goal in the first half and 6 in the second. North Korea was thrashed 7-0. 7. -nil. Seven. Totally destroyed their morale. And in the last game against Ivory Coast, there was no chance. 3-0. North Korea was eliminated with 3 defeats in 3 games and a goal difference of negative 11. The worst team of 2010, their only achievement was scoring against Brazil. And speaking of Brazil, let's go now to 2014, when the worst team was also from Brazil's group. The group was the host country, Croatia, Mexico and Cameroon. Cameroon was somewhat experienced, had already played some World Cups and still had Sammy Wetsu. So in the first game, Cameroon faced Mexico and wasn't bad, just lost by 1 goal scored in the second half. Now the next game was against Croatia with Modric and Rakitic, and it was this moment they realized it wasn't gonna end well. Cameroon conceded a goal in the first half and 3 in the second. Final score? 4-0. And now had to face just one more opponent, the home team Brazil. So Neymar scored the first, then Cameroon surprisingly equalized, but shortly after Neymar scored another and in the second half, Brazil just increased the advantage. 4-1. In 3 games, Cameroon conceded 9 goals and scored only 1 ending up with the worst campaign of 2014. And after that, Cameroon did not qualify for the next cup. So the feat of being the worst team went to another country. And in the 2018 World Cup held in Russia, two teams were playing for the first time, Iceland and Panama. Iceland ended up eliminated quickly, but at least managed to draw a match. Now Panama was bad. The Panamanian team was drawing a group with two giants, England and Belgium, besides Tunisia. It was very difficult, so much so that none of Panama's players played for a big team. The number 10 played for Deportivo La Coruña B, the keeper played for Dinamo Bucharest and the number 9 played for a Chilean team called Huachipato. So when they faced Belgium, with De Bruyne and Lukaku, conceded 3 goals. Now the next game was against England, which had been eliminated in the group stage the previous cup. So they went all in. That's a header for John Stones. That's... Oh, Hawk Lingard. Jesse Lane cross for Sterling. And now it's in. Oh, same place. Have to see shot deflected. Harry... At the end, Panama got a consolation goal, finishing 6-1. They suffered the biggest defeat of that World Cup, a real humiliation. Now we're already eliminated and would face the other eliminated Tunisia. Then Panama scored the first, but suffered the turnaround and were defeated again. In 3 matches, Panama scored only 2 goals and conceded 11, a goal difference of negative 9. Now after so many bad teams, we finally arrive at the 2022 World Cup. 
and if there was a team that prepared itself for the cup, it was the home team. Qatar didn't want to play badly at home and prepared a lot for the tournament. They were champions of the 2019 Asian Cup and played in the 2019 Copa America as guests. After that, in 2021, finished third place in the FIFA Arab Cup and reached the semi-finals of the CONCACAF Gold Cup. They were doing very well and wanted a shine in their own country. So when the World Cup finally arrived, we're joining a group with Ecuador, Senegal and the Netherlands. The home team was confident, but then against Ecuador in the opening match, they conceded a goal from a penalty in the first minute and another in the first half. 2-0. Qatar couldn't even get a single shot on target. The qualification would be decided in the next game against Senegal. So they went all in, but DI scored in the first half and DHU in the second. Then the home team pulled one back, but Senegal scored another. 3-1. Qatar was officially eliminated and in the last game against the Netherlands suffered a 2-0 defeat. Qatar ended their World Cup journey, losing all three games, scoring only one goal and conceding seven. The worst was the home team. And another team that also lost all three games was Canada. They conceded seven goals and scored two. Just one more than Qatar. A real disappointment for them. So if you enjoyed this video, check out this other one that I posted. I think you're gonna like it. Thank you and bye.